Hey everybody, it is so good to have you here. What an, what an honor to be able to share the word today. Uh, and uh, thank you for, for, for taking the time to do that. You know, I just want to say thank you to Thomas and Kat, our amazing lead pastors. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm biased, you're biased, but I think we can all agree that we have the best lead pastors in the whole world. Uh, so we love you guys and, and uh, are so grateful that we get to be able to build church together with you. And how awesome was Vision Sunday? Uh, you know, I'm just excited for the, for the year ahead. And, and one thing that I just have, want to say before we get started is that I really miss you. Really miss seeing you in person uh, throughout all our locations. You know, I, I'm, I can't wait to the day where we get to see each other face to face. But, but today, you know, we, we, we have the privilege of actually being together online, which is, I'm also very excited about. Uh, and, you know, what, what, what a great way to, to finish off uh, the 21 days of praying and fasting together like this by getting into the Word of God. And, and so we're, so we're going to read from Psalm 100 today. I, th I was thinking that is the perfect place to go after uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I hope that you can follow along with me. So I'm going to read it, and then we're going to unpack it and talk about it together. And, we're gonna, and I really believe that you know, God is going to speak to you. I believe that God is going to speak to me. So I hope that you're expectant. So let's read together. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. Because it is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. And his faithfulness continues through all generations. How beautiful is that? And if you want a title for this message, it is called Out of Body Experience. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for the honor it is to be able to open your word and to read it. Father, we pray, Jesus, that you will speak to us, uh, that you will transform us, and uh, that we will realize more of who you are, more of who we are, and what we're called to do as we unpack this together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know if you have ever looked yourself in the mirror and thought, is that what I really look like right now? You know, I, I had this experience a couple of years ago where, where we had a guest speaker in church. Uh, it was on a Sunday. I was going to pick him up from the, uh, from the hotel, and I, and I was so excited, you know, to, to, to meet this person, and, and, uh, and I, was just, I was just ready for it. So I, I, I drive up to the hotel, park the car, just going to get some stuff in the boot, uh, and then I, then I go to close the back door. And as I close it, it's almost like time stops. It's like slow motion. And, and as I'm pulling down the door, I look up and I realize that the door is coming straight towards me. And I knock myself in the head with it. And, and, and I don't know how I did that. But, but the, first of all, I don't know how I did that. But it gets worse. Uh, there was, there's, there's a corner uh, at the side of the door that I had actually like, really gotten into my forehead. So I, I was totally like confused, a little bit rattled. I was like, what, what is going on here? Uh, and, and then I tried to, tried to collect myself. Look, okay, I have a little bit of time before, uh, before I'm supposed to meet him. So I walk in the door to, to, the, to the lobby try, to try to find a bathroom so I can look myself in the mirror, see what I look like and all of that. And then for whatever reason, he had decided to come down to the lobby to wait for me. So he was already there. And not just that, he had brought his whole family with him. His, his wife was there, his kids were there, and I could see it on their face that they were horrified. And, and I was like, oh, no. And they were like, are you okay? Are you okay? And so I, I apparently had blood streaming down my face, and it did not look good. So I, so I make my way to the bathroom just to, to see, like, how bad is this? And as I looked in the mirror, I could see this is not Good. And I, and, I, and I was thinking there, like, is this really how I look, like, what I look like? And, and, I, and I was just thinking, like, you, you are definitely not the man for this job. And I, I don't know about you, but when I, when I look back over the last 12 months, you know, there's been so many times where, I'm, where, where throughout the challenges and the, the, the obstacles and the things that are coming my way, 
where I've almost met myself in the mirror and, and, and looked in, in there and thought, is that really it? Like, I, I don't feel like I have what it takes. And, and, and I don't know if you, if you know this feeling, but this feeling of I am not enough. I'm not sure if I can make it through this. I'm not sure if I can, if I, if I can push forward through this. And, and I think that, that, that is a feeling that, that many of us experience in our life. And I think one temptation that we can have when we experience that is that we try to numb these feelings. You know, and, and we, we probably all have our favorite numbing, numbing activities that we like to do. But what actually the Bible encourages us to do, instead of trying to push it down and to, to, um, to pretend that it's not there, to actually almost to dive deeper in it. Because like, when we look within ourselves and we realize that I cannot find myself within myself, you know, it can be a very scary and saddening experience. But what the Bible encourages us to then to do is to let that drive us to look outwards, to look above. And, and what the biblical writers are saying is that actually where we find the answer, what we find, what we need is in worship. When we decide we're going to make our creator our ultimate thing, we're going to make him our pursuit, our joy. And, and, and that, that is worship. But if, if we're talking about that worship is the answer. What, what is worship and, 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 and how is it the answer? And I'm glad you're asking the question because I was asking the same questions and I have prepared a little something that we can go through together. And I think the perfect place to go for that is this Psalm, Psalm 100. It's in, the, it's in the middle, in the heart of the Psalms, you know, the, the book of the songs. And, and uh, so, so we're going we're we're to read it and we're going we're gonna to unpack it together. But the first, the, first, uh, the first thing I want to highlight is, is, is the way that it starts. You know, it starts with really, really encouraging us to step out and, and worship. And it's, it starts, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And then it says, know that the Lord is God. It, it's just like, boom, there it is. And I don't know what you feel when, when you hear that, but I, I can almost feel like it's almost settling down inside my soul, like, whoa, yes, I, I like it. But then, then I'm like, what, what is actually going on here? Because the word Lord in Hebrew is Yahweh, and Yahweh is the name of God. So it basically says, know that God is God. And, so, and why does it say that? You know, the, at, at that point in time, there were many gods that people were worshiping, but the psalmist make, makes it very clear that Know that Yahweh, know that the Lord is God. You know, there, there, there might be many, many other gods out there, but don't be distracted. Like, I think one way to think about it is, like, I, I, I was remembering one time that I was out walking with my younger sisters. I have, I'm the oldest brother, and, uh, and or I'm, I'm an older brother with two younger sisters, and uh, my parents have given uh, me the responsibility for them. We were out hiking. They were, they, I can't remember how old they were. Uh, but not, not very old, and uh, we, we were walking through the forest, and we got to a lake, and I don't know if you have uh, seen a frozen lake lately, but uh, I, I love them. It's just something mesmerizing about them, and, and we thought, let's go out on the lake. So as the good brother I am, I, I sent them ahead of me. So they, they were walking first, then I was coming after, and then my younger sister was walking for her first, and then suddenly she goes through the water, or not through the water, it's through the ice. And, and so, so as she drops down, I freak out, I, I run towards her, and, and then I luckily realized that there was two layers of ice. So she had, she had gone through the first layer and had kind of stopped, so she was like stuck, <laughs> stuck there, and I, I was just so, so grateful we were able to get her up. But I think sometimes, you know, some, some things uh, that we're looking towards, some things that, things that we're trusting, they look great on the outside, but actually, it doesn't carry us. You know, I think one, one person that has described this really well is, is a, is a well-known American secular writer uh, named David Foster Wallace, who, who once uh, held a speech that has now become very, very famous. And sadly, not long after he, he held this speech, he took his own life. But what, what he says, I think, I think a lot of us are able to resonate with. He said this, that in the day-to-day -day trenches of adult life, there is actually no such a thing as atheism. There is no such a thing as not worshiping. Everybody worships. The only choice we get is what 
to worship. And the compelling reason for maybe choosing some sort of God or spiritual type thing to worship is that pretty much anything else you worship will eat you alive. And if you worship money and things, if they are where you tap your real meaning in life, then you will never have enough. Never feel you have enough. It's the truth. Worship your body and sexual allure and you will always feel ugly. Worship power and you will end up feeling weak and afraid and you will need ever more power over others to numb your, you to your own fear. Worship your intellect being seen as smart and you will end up feeling stupid, a fraud, always on the verge of being found out. That these things that we choose to worship, they, they draw us in, but ultimately they destroy us. And, and I don't know if you can recognize yourself in that, but I know that I can, that I have seen this in my life where I have pursued other things, where I have made other things my ultimate thing, but just like the eyes that look good, it, it didn't carry me. Because the reality is that no created thing can bear the weight of our deepest longings. It cannot carry the load of our ultimate fears and dreams. You know, it is only God who can do that. And so, so when the psalmist says, know that the Lord is God, man, it's such a safe place to be. It is such a peaceful place to be because you know that God can carry you. Yahweh, the great I am, you know, when, whatever we need, whatever we're facing, you know, when, when, when we're stepping into it, we can know that he says, I am enough. I am whatever you need. And, you know, he, the psalmist goes on in the end to say, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You know, he is faithful to the end and even beyond your own lifetime. You know, that's just, just mind blowing. But we can know that the Lord is God. And actually in that knowing, in that enjoyment, in, in that it is actually worship. When, when we realize who he is. Yes, so that's the first thing, that worship is in the knowing. But then it, it, the, the psalmist goes immediately on to kind of reflect himself. And I, and I love this, that, that, that he goes on to say, it is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. You know, the beautiful and surprising thing, it was at least surprising to me, is that when you decide to go outside yourself, have this out-of-body experience where you, where you seek beyond yourself towards your creator, in that process, you actually discover yourself. You actually find out who you really are. And you know, this verse is really talking about our position, you know, our position as his people, as his creation. You know, the Bible talks about it as we are being created in his image. And when we realize that, that we are his sons, we are his daughter. Something powerful happens. When we, when, we, when we recognize that our identity, it is not achieved, it is received. It is not something that we can do to earn it. We can, only, we can only actually just take it in and just realize, man, that is who I am. I am a son. I am a daughter of the living God. And when that happens, when we take that in and when we, when we kind of transform it from just being up here and we're kind of pushing it down here so it becomes a part of us, is that when we realize that we are loved, that we are forgiven, that we are set free, that we have a fresh start, that there's a plan for our life, it actually starts transforming us. You know, so, it, so it's in the knowing of it, but it's then it's also in the becoming. And that in the becoming, we worship. You know, we often say it like this, that it is heart transformation, not behavior modification. It's not something that we try to, to, to pressure us from the outside. It's actually leaning into who we are called to be letting God transform us from the inside out. So it's an out-of-body experience that then becomes also inside your body. It's confusing. But I, ho I hope that you're following so far. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, it says this, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit so we, 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 we are we are watching him we are we are being transformed towards him and in the knowing in the becoming we are worshiping and then the psalmist gets to kind of these words that we probably all like quite often 
relate to as worship. It's these practices of worship. And so we're going to, we're going to talk about those as well because they are important. I love what Søren Kierkegaard said, and this is freely translated from Danish to English uh, by yours truly. But he, he said that, you know, what distinguishes us as human beings from the rest of creation is that we walk up right. You know, we, we, we walk up straight and we, we, are, we are the pinnacle of creation. But what the most beautiful thing about us is, is that we get to lay down in worship. You know, we realize that worship is not just some, some theoretical pursuit or, or, or just, uh, just in our heads. No, it's actually something that we're involved in with our whole being, you know, in, in practices of worship. And we're going to go through these and, 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 and I want to show you kind of how, how this all works together. But the first thing uh, that the psalmist says is shout for joy to the Lord. Shout. Like, I, I, I don't know if you like shouting, but I, I just think it's, it's for some reason it, it is just an awesome thing to do. It's, I, I have very few places where I can actually shout because it's socially inappropriate. I can't even do it at home because I have neighbors and they, were, they will be uh, frightened if I start shouting. Um, but but uh, I think, you know, shouting is such a, an immediate response to something that happens. You know, my, my, uh, my, nef my, my nephew, his name is Otto. He is two years old and we celebrated Christmas together. And I, I loved seeing him receive presents because he's old enough to understand that the presents are for him and that he loves it. He thinks it's fun, but he doesn't have, have vocabulary to express uh, thanks and, and, uh, and appreciation. But what he does is he receives a presence and then he, then he shouts. He's, he, he, like he, he really he bursts out this, this, this thing of joy that is just so beautiful. It's just an immediate response. You know, if you're at a, at a football game, you know, people are shouting because they're so excited about what's going on. And I reckon, you know, that there's something powerful that happens when we shout, when we decide, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop caring, like kind of lose these restrictions that I put on me and, and I'm gonna lift up a shout. And I cannot wait until we are back in church together, when we, when we just, as a, just as a response of knowing who God is, knowing who we are in him, knowing what God has done for us, that we, that we just let out a, a shout of joy to the Lord. And then the second thing is, come before him with joyful songs, and that we sing. Worship is also singing. It is more than singing, but it's not less than singing. It's a, it's a very important part of, of, of the biblical tradition and what, what we're a part of that, that we actually worship through song. And I, and, I, and I don't know about you, but I am very grateful that God has chosen this, this method for us to actually engage with him. Music is so beautiful and God has created humans with the ability to create music. And, uh, and, and you know, there's something powerful that happens when we sing together. I, I know I experience it for myself when I'm by myself, but also... Also, when we're together, you know, I can't wait to be in a room full of people lifting up the name of Jesus together in song. You know, I, I, have, a, I have a friend who just finished his master thesis uh, in theology, and he wrote about the power of music. And, and Samuel, my friend, he, he, he said that he would describe it like this, that when, when we're worshiping, it's almost like you take a truth, music takes the truth and allows you to jump in it and swim around in it. And, I, and I, I think that really, really explains my experience of it, that, that you're taking this truth, you, you know that the Lord is good, and you're, you're almost pushing it down into your heart. It becomes a part of you. You're, you're, you're exploring it. So Because these practices that we do, they, it, like, just picture like a, a feedback loop. You know, it goes from, from practicing to knowing to becoming to practicing knowing becoming and, and and we're growing increasingly in our knowledge of who god is and growing further into the people that we're called to be and we're called to sing and i cannot oh i love singing every day but especially when we do it together and then we get to thanksgiving to be thankful this is also a, a, a big big christian tradition uh, and, and throughout the Bible, we can see that we are called to be grateful, to, to actually focus on what God has done for us. That when, when we do that, when we decide we're not going to focus on everything that is happening around us, and, and we, we, we always have, have reasons to despair and reasons why we need to be fearful or worried, uh, but actually that, that, the, that the God is encouraging us to actually focusing on, I, I want to be thankful. I want to I receive what you have done for me. I want to I focus on that. And there's something powerful that happens 
in thanksgiving. And I want to encourage you, especially in this season, to think about what am I grateful for? And in that humbling experience of saying, I, I receive what you have done for me, Jesus, you know, that is worship. Worship, in essence, is thanksgiving. You know, it's worship giving weight to what God has done for us and who he is. And then the last thing I wanted to highlight is serve the Lord with gladness. Or in the translation we, we read was actually uh, worship the Lord with gladness. And, and, and trans, like different translators choose different words because uh, the word that is used for worship here or for serving here is the word abed. And the first time this, this word was used um, in, in, in the Old Testament was at, at the very beginning when God encountered or when God created Adam and Eve and he, and he sent them out into the garden to till the ground to work it, to take care of it, to steward it, that, the word he used was abed. So actually, the, the action of taking care of what they had been given, been taking care of the opportunity that they had been given, that was worship. And that encourages me, because I don't have to wait till next Sunday to worship, or wait till I can sing a song to worship, but actually, whenever we go to work, when, I, when you go to work tomorrow, when you go to school tomorrow, when, you, when you're there with your family, raising your kids tomorrow, when you are with your friends tomorrow, actually, by taking care of that opportunity to serve, you are worshiping. You know, I, I think it is such a beautiful, beautiful thought, and, and it do, doesn't matter what you do. There's nothing that is more spiritual than, I, like, preaching is not more spiritual than actually taking care of a garden. Whenever you engage in something and you say, I'm going to do it for the Lord, it is worship. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23, it says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. You know, Tom, Thomas said it like this, you know, players want to play. When we realize that, that we can actually make a decision to say, the opportunity that I have of service in front of me, I'm going to do it for the Lord. That is worship. And, and, and you know, we can also take it further you know, and think, how do we actually serve the Lord with gladness? Because God doesn't really need anything. But, 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 but what we do is we take care of the opportunities that we've been given, but also the Bible is very clear that we are to serve people, serve one another. That, that in, in the serving or saying, I, I'm going to lower myself and use my strength to lift someone else, to serve someone else. To, like, like, that is worship. And, and, and that is actually where we find meaning, where we fi find where we're called to do. You know, you won't find yourself by going backpacking in Thailand, and you can't do that uh, now anyway. But, but don't worry about that, because you can actually find yourself through serving others. And, you know, and we do that, that, that throughout, throughout the spheres of life, wherever we are, but, and here in church as well, that we, that we get to serve one another. And in that, we actually find ourselves, and we do it with gladness, not because we've been forced by someone to do it, because I think if, if we get into that mindset, we lose the joy in it and, it, and it doesn't become worship. But when we realize that I'm choosing to do this, you know, Jesus was very clear. He didn't, he didn't let someone take his life. He actually gave his life. For us, and you know that's that, that's what we are uh, encouraged to do as well—to make a decision. I I'm going to use my life to serve God and to serve people. And, and you know Jesus was very clear about that about himself as well—that that he did not come to be served, but to serve. That's in Matthew chapter 20 and 28, where where he talks to his disciples about this very thing—that even Jesus himself, who was worthy of worship who was worthy to be served, he came to serve. And when we enter into that tradition, when we enter into that, we, we are actually, in, in these practices of worship, we, we get to know more of who God is. Because I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't feel like I know who God is, but actually by singing, by lifting my hands, even if I don't feel like it, in that process, I'm jumping into that truth of who God is. I'm swimming around in it, and it actually starts transforming me. We're becoming more who we were created to be. But the first step in this process is actually to allow Jesus to serve you. Because he didn't come to be served, he came to serve and to give his life. He gave his life on the cross for us so that we can step into this relationship with him. 
and start this journey of getting to know him and getting to know ourselves. And I want to give you the opportunity right now. Uh, you might not have heard anyone talk about Jesus in this way before, and, and this is the first time for you. Or, or you might have known God in the past, been a Christian, but if you're honest with yourself, you've walked away from him. What, I, what I'm going to do, I want to lead us in a prayer where we decide we're going to step into that relationship. And, and wherever you are, you know, you, you can be a part of this. And I just want to encourage you right now to close your eyes if you can do that. And if, if that is you, that you are, you are connecting your life to Jesus either for the first time today or you're coming back to him, then, then I want you to repeat this prayer that I'm going to pray out loud now. And then you just say it for yourself and make it your prayer to God to say, Jesus, I want to receive what you have done for me. I want to give you my life. I want to make you my Lord. I want to know that the Lord is God. So pray after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you that you gave yourself for me, that you died on that cross so that I can have forgiveness for my sins, so that I can have a fresh start, so that I can, I can have life and life to the full. Help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, a massive congratulations to you. You know, there's people in the comment sections now going crazy because we really believe that it's the best thing that you can ever do to decide to follow Jesus. And, you know, this is the beginning of a journey and, and we want to help you along with that. And what, what we would love to do is actually to give you a Bible. We, we give you a Bible because we believe that the best thing that you can do now is to get to know Jesus for yourself so that you can start talking to him, so that you can get to know him, so that you can get to know yourself and start living the life that you have been called to live. So we want to we wanna send it to you. And the way that you do that is just to let us know that you prayed that prayer. And so email us at next at hillsong.dk. And then we want to contact you, see if there's any way that we can help you and send you a Bible. And I reckon we need to give those people one more massive round of applause in, in the comment section. Those clapping emojis are looking phenomenal. But hey, uh, I just want to say God bless you. And, and just realize that, you know, in the out-of-body experience where we get to encounter God, that is where we find ourselves and where we find what we're called to do. And so be blessed, everybody.